guys had only been in this room for the last couple of minutes and listened to the shenanigans going on, it was ridiculous. Um, hello, welcome to Tuesday Live at Studio R12. I'm Patty. I'm Carrie. And we are all about stencils and painting and DIY. Yes. And today we are going to blow hippie noodles everywhere only because a solution to a problem has been found. And I'm so excited to bring it to you guys. And that is what lives are all about. So if you have questions, mm -hmm. ask us so that sometimes if we don't know the answer, we can find the answer. But um, also so that we can share with you discoveries that we make in the process of our painting. Yes, 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 yes. So this all started um, a few months ago with a trip to the Dollar Tree. Mm -hmm. Used to be Dollar Tree. Now it's Dollar Twenty Five Tree. <laughs> but it's, it's fine. Who's, I'm not bitter. <laughs> Okay, okay, don't get me started on me, don't do it. Okay, but um, so we took a trip looking for surfaces and things to paint on, and we came back with things like these little placemats, so $1.25, and then chargers, and ignore the paint job on this, I'm gonna explain why that looks like that, but $1.25, right, everything's like that. So we know that we're all trying to save money, we know that we all have expensive heating bills and blah, 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 so we are trying to find ways to help you, the crafter, um, save money. So we want to paint on things that are affordable. Yes. But how do you paint on a piece of plastic? How do you paint on a plastic charger? How do you paint on tin things? How do you paint on all of that? So what we will be doing um, coming up is making sure that you have the preparation step so that you can... Um, Paint and prep your piece so that it will work and be just as nice as a piece of wood if you need it to be. Yeah. Great. Yeah. All right. You're up. Okay. I'm up. All right. We have one very large giveaway today. Ooh. I have a six by six stencil pack. Um, someone just grabbed a bunch of six by six stencils and threw them all together and we are going to be giving them away. It has crackle, it has animal print. Diamonds, checks, yeah. Everything that you could want. And I'd say there's probably at least 15, 20 yeah, there. Yeah, that's a lot of stencils. There's a lot. So you have a chance to win this today. Like, okay. share, and comment on this live. Comment on our YouTube channel if you're on YouTube. And I will announce the winner. Um, Patty Current gets an extra entry because she said my hair looked good today. Um, <laughs> I will. <laughs> um, I have Muppet hair today, so that's not happening for me. <laughs> but I will announce the winner Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern on our Facebook page. So make sure that you are coming back because we have announced some really big giveaways lately yeah. and people have not come back to claim their prize. Oh, that's and we so want sad. to send you these prizes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I want to get them off my desk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, one of the things that's really cool about our, we have a four by four set and a six by six set. It has a little um, grommet thing that you can take apart. It's like the scrapbook book um, adapter, but you can flip through these. They're easy storage, tuck them down into your painting bag and they are mobile with you and you have every dumb thing. I don't know if you've ever tried to paint a star without a stencil, but um, one of the reasons I make stencils as a company is because some of these things, bats, squares, stars, are dumb to try to base coat or trace and base. Um, and so that is why we have these um, stencils is because of pain in the tailory. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we hate pain in the tailoring. <laughs> we don't like pain in the tailoring. Um, so if you are not already subscribed to our newsletter, you need to head over to studior12.com and a spin wheel will pop up and you will get to enter your email, spin the wheel, and we send out newsletters with new announcements and techniques and new products and video releases. And we have just started a new segment called What to Paint Wednesday. Nice. And that is something fun that we're doing to help you decide what to paint next. Yeah. What is on trend? What is popular? The season. What, yeah, even. what do yeah. you need to be doing now for the season that's coming up? Yeah, so some people got lost. Like um, we heard from people that were like, oh, I didn't get my kids' Christmas countdowns done. So we try to take some of that work away for you by 
sending newsletters that are timely, mm -hmm. and then like what to paint Wednesday is like, ooh, um, it is only, you know, 60 days until fill in the blank. Um, if you haven't got your stuff, now is plenty of time to get it ordered, get started, yes. get done, get finished. And then we're here, um, our Saturday, Saturday video releases are here to show you how quick and easy you can paint um, stuff. This morning when I was doing the prep for this, I was like, ooh, am I gonna get done? And you know what? It took me exactly like seven minutes to stencil my project three times, you know? And it's an involved stencil. So like stenciling makes it fast. So yeah. you're buying time exactly. basically when you buy a stencil and it's reusable so you can use it. Over and our friend Nancy just said, if I don't have another opportunity to say this, I've learned more from y'all than anyone. Your step-by-step -step instructions of whys and hows are amazing and I appreciate you. And we, we get, you, yes, thank you, Nancy. And yeah. you know, we get that a lot. We, we are here to help you. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, I'm a, I, I swore when I started painting cause I was a stay at home mom without a car. So I had three little guys mm -hmm. at my house and couldn't drive off and go do the thing. Cause my husband was on second shift. So, you know, when I could use the car, it was like midnight. And so I swore that once I learned to paint that I would try to share it. Yeah. because it took me two years to learn some really simple techniques because I didn't have, we didn't have videos then. You know, it's been 35 years for me since I started and I just knew I could help other people do it. So I just, it's been my mantra for 35 years. Yep. Yeah, here I am. And if you are, <laughs> here I am. Here I am. Um, and on YouTube, that's where we do our, we do this live on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And then on Saturdays, we release other videos. We have also been releasing a lot of short videos. Yes, so they are nuggets. snippets that are a minute or less. Yesterday, we released two products that you might already have around your home that you can use to wash your dome stencil mm -hmm. brushes. Um, so you'll want to yeah, check, check those out. out. Yeah. But last weekend, we released this video on layering layering greenery. So Patty used only two stencils for these projects, and she layered and layered and did different yep. colors and shaded and highlighted. And it's a really great lesson on painting, on how to do that, and then how to do it on light and dark backgrounds. Yeah, and what was neat about this, I actually like almost giggled gleefully while I was doing this. It was a ridiculous amount of joy that I was experiencing. Um, I'm gonna put this one down and show on this one. Um, so this little faded background pieces right here that make it look like there's depth is actually just less pressure on your brush. So it's the same color as this, but with no pressure. And then you can warm your colors up just a little bit with a little bit of yellow to make them come forward. Mm -hmm. And then I flipped my stencil over and moved it and twisted it and turned it so that it became more stencils. So it was a really neat lesson. And then I did it on um, black because the colors actually, it doesn't work quite the same way. You kind of reverse things. So I wanted you to be able to see it on a dark color and then on a light color and then how to anchor as well. So there's a lot of really cool lessons in this video. I, I suggest highly that you see it because yes. it was phenomenal. And then this weekend, we are taking this lesson mm -hmm. to the next level and we are showing you how to actually apply it on a project. And this is um, actually going to be a project set. So we get asked that all the time, when can I get all this stuff? So Saturday we will release the video and we will also release a complete set for all of these stencils and the yeah. surface that we use to make this. Yeah, and then if you pair, like so say, like the lighter color isn't in your house, then if you, pair, if you take the video from last week and you put it together with this one, mm -hmm. you'll be able to make this on a dark piece yeah. if you want it to. Yep. So that's a really neat like how to apply different kinds of colors and tones and stuff like that. So fun things coming and That's we so have, exciting. oh, were we gonna announce this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we asked you guys, so last week we talked about tissue boxes and we had, I think, five examples and we wanted to do a, a Saturday release for these, but we couldn't decide which, which one, one to do. So we asked you guys on Facebook and on YouTube, everybody voted. And the winner that we will soon be doing a Saturday release on is the B yes. using foil. Yes. 
So fun. It's foil through stencils. Yep. Oh my goodness. And Patty's really great at using foil through stencils. Carrie is not as great. Um, so <laughs> Patty I'm has been at this as long <laughs> as she's been alive. I'm so <laughs> there is that. I'm thankful that this is her weekend. <laughs> I got 20 years on you, girl. But yeah, no, you guys let us know if you see something and you want um you want stuff, you know, you want to know how to do foil this or, you know, whatever the techniques are, let us know and we are here for you. Yeah. Or we can also direct you to videos we already have because we're over 200 easy now. Yes. And I don't know what that number is. I should know that number. It's over 200. Okay. Who's ready to get started with this? Um, we are going to show you how to prime plastic so that it um, actually sticks on the piece. And I want to show you a little bit about my process before I tell you what I did. Um, so when I get ready to prime on plastic and do um, any of any kind of test on a piece that I'm unsure of, number one thing that I do is I wipe it down with either vinegar or rubbing alcohol. And I don't know if it's 70% or 91%. I just happen to have 91% and that's what I use. So you saturate your paper towel, you wipe the whole thing down, and that is a great way to get rid of any of the manufacturer's lubricant, grease, you know, schmutz. Let's just call it schmutz. So, um, you know, there's always going to be something loose or whatever on a product that just goes through a process and just gets delivered out to the other side. People's fingerprints um, as well. So the first thing you do, you wipe it down, get rid of the grease, the fingerprints, the oils, and all of that. And I did that, you know, with both of these products. Now, these are my test products. So when we went to the Dollar Tree to get the test products, um, we came back and I was like, okay, what am I going to do? And then I went to stores and I explored the mediums. Um, I already know a lot about the mediums that are available. And I also know which ones don't always work, but sometimes work. And I've been searching for an always work. Now, I'm going to caveat. Um, Sometimes things are made of different chemicals um, and they might not, there might, we were talking about painting Crocs earlier. And sometimes there might be an additive in like a plastic product that is meant to keep things flexible. And so um, that might prevent something from sticking to that, that stuff. So this is working on the products that I've tested it here. And I have high confidence, I'm like 80% confident that on many, many, many things from the Dollar Tree or anywhere else that you'll have success. Um, I will be testing more and more as we go along. So that's my caveat. Okay, so the very first thing, we wipe off all the grease and oil, we allow that to dry. Step two is we're going to sometimes, and this is an old sometimes, I'll sand lightly. And so we have different grits. Um, We've got a 220, we've got a 60. So on this piece, I actually sanded before. Okay, so then I, cause that's always what I've done in the past is give anything slick, a little sandy sand, and that's gonna help things bite into the surface and it's gonna give it tooth is what they call, call it. And um, so I did that and then it was like, oh, well this, this is working pretty good, you know? So I, I sprayed it with the primer and when I did that, now I actually only had a gloss version of this. So this is actually super shiny. Um, and so I didn't know if there would be a difference between matte and whatever. So this is my process. So then I always do what I call a scratch test. Okay. So the scratch test is where you take your nails after it's dried and you eat into it. Like this is on my test piece. You scratch, scratch, scratch into that, and that is going to help you see if you can chip away at the piece. And I know any of you who have painted things for a while, unless you're just painting on wood, um, you get a piece and like stuff won't stick. And so I have experienced this. I've even taught this in workshops and stuff all across the country. So um, getting that like can't scratch tested away, like it's worth the sacrifice of my buck 25 to um to see if it'll fit if it will actually work and you can see just i don't know if you can see all my scratchings on here so and then i went and i did it on one of these placemats these placemats look like these super thin super kind of a nice um feel 
They don't feel like a flimsy thing. They don't flip up on the end. They don't flip under. Um, they stay nice and flat when you put them down. This guy has been mistreated like a lot and it is doing fine. So it got primed. You can see the writing in the background from what it was before. And it did take um, three really fine coats of my primer and my primer is actually a spray. And then a secret when you're spraying is to go start off over here and over to here. Don't start on here because you end up with those big wads of like wet stuff. So if you start off of your piece and go across and go that way and then your next one is gonna go this way, that's a really good way to get a nice even coat without any of those like drippy blobs, you know what I'm talking about? Um, give me thumbs up if you know what I'm talking about because I, I feel like drippy, every, blobs. drippy blobs are terrible. Um, so, and then when I do the next coat, once it's dry to the touch, I go the other way. And then my third and final coat, I go that way. Now, what my goal was, was not to cover this art up. My goal was to make paint, water-based paint, stick to this plastic. That was my goal and stick without being able to scratch off. So that was the goal and that is what you know I was after. So I didn't actually need to cover those letters, but it also makes a good prime step. Okay, so that's a key. It means that you can't maybe see what's underneath and you don't have to worry about letters showing through. Go ahead. And um, we have several comments on how much everybody loves your sound effects today. <laughs> I'm wearing the sassy pin. And, <laughs> and, and and Debbie also loves the funny words you come up with. There is isms. We she's call them been, patty -isms. She's been on one today, friends. 4.30 this morning. Um, <laughs> I have had a great morning. I've had all the successes in the universe, and I am loving life. So um, I came in all ready for the world, and everybody else was a little bit like Monday Tuesday. feeling on Tuesday. Yeah, I'm, I'm a tired. <laughs> like, I'm good on Mondays. I have relaxed. But I come into Tuesday, and I'm like, like tired Tuesday. Yeah. And then Patty comes in and just... <laughs> 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 Yeah. You need to go sit down, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And so then um, Morgan got on me and said, what is with, what was with you? And so I'm going to put on my sassy pin. So if you're feeling sassy and you know it. <laughs> you're not alone. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm going to swerve over to a thing about the Dollar Tree for a hot second because this was super important to find and figure out. I'm not actually... I'm a fan of Dollar Tree, Dollar Store, all of that, um, because I never lived near them. When we lived in Portland, Oregon, um, we they kind of fight some of those bigger um, corporations, like they kept Walmart out for a really long time um, in, Port in the Portland area. Um, and so it was a weird like world. It, it wasn't the same as everywhere else. And so I didn't learn. If I was where I was in Portland, I would have, with all the kids and all of the expenses, I probably would have learned to love the Dollar Tree, but I had Michaels. So I went to the craft store instead, yeah. you know? Okay, so let's talk about these um, little placemats. Okay, so we started off, um, did I keep one of the ones? It doesn't matter which ones they are. So this was the original one, and it actually uh, it sort of shows the, the color on the back. They all seem to be made the same. Um, so this was the original one that we bought, and we bought two of them. And then I painted and scratched one up, and then it was like, okay, I need two or three more to show the process. And so then we went back to the dollar store to go buy more of them. And so we picked up a pile, and we knew that this one was bigger. Okay, that was the biggest one. And then we knew that these were about the same size. Well, then when we came back, we realized the corners were different. So this corner is a fat little round corner and this is a skinnier little round corner. And so when you are buying things to paint and you want to do like, so say you want placemats. I feel like if you have Christmas stencils at your house that you can take whatever color trends there are and you can mix and match and make your, make beautiful place settings, placemats for your family for a dollar twenty-five each, I think that that is just like a ridiculous. That's such a great number. Yeah, I love that number. So, um, 
And then your stencils, because they're reusable, then you don't have to feel bad about having them and not touching them again. So you can do this and make a great thing. But if you pick them up, make sure if you are crazy about like matchy matchy, make sure that you get enough. Like if you have a family of five, maybe pick up seven. And that way you have like some scratchy scratchy moments and you know, stuff like that. But make sure you have enough so you can make them to match what you want. And then this was my hippie noodle today. This was really, really cool. And then we're gonna get to, if you guys are just joining us, we're gonna show you how to prep um, plastic, plastic stencils or plastic um, products from Dollar Tree. So this one is just slightly bigger and we took the anyway tray and the anyway tray, I'm gonna tip this out, is a wood tray that you can make. And this is, you can paint the base. So it's just got like my initial, my monogram. And then you can take these thin MDF boards and you can just plop those in. And now it's in any way you want it for any season you want it, right? So perfect, right? And this is not the intent of this at all. We just wanted to try plastic. So today, literally today, um, there was a question about something and, oh, it was the corners. Yeah, the corners didn't match. And I was like, oh, oh my goodness, I just realized these corners don't match. So then I was testing, I got all of them that we bought out to see if they fit. And that obviously does not fit. Am I on you, Dustin? Is that where I'm at? No, Okay. So that's too small. And so then I tried the little chefy guy who's a little bit different. Too small. I like and this then, is like Goldilocks. I know, it's like totally Goldilocks. And then this guy, and I about just cried because it's just right. It fits perfectly. Okay, so. So wait, with that yeah. being said, friends, we have put our anyway trays on sale for $19.99 today. Ooh, so good you deal. can go stock up on them. I am sharing the link. Stock up on anyway trays, run to the Dollar Tree and grab your mats. Yeah. You might wanna take your tray with you when you get it. Yeah. Just so you can make sure it's so you know how which, you want if it's it. the one with the two glasses and the wine, I feel like that's going to be safe. But, <laughs> yeah. but they all have every different kind, you know, like every Dollar Tree. Like we get the stuff. I I believe and confess this that we get everybody's leftovers from across the country because we're in Appalachia. Walmart treats us that way too. We get stuff from Minnesota and we get stuff from Florida and none of it matches our, our, our climate. You know, it's just yeah. like we get everybody's whatever and they, I don't know, I believe that, but. Um, now our sure. anyway tray is 18 by 12. So it, that's gonna be the size that you're yeah. going to look for when you And go when to we store. made this tray, um, we made it so it would fit like a dinner plate. So you could put a stack of plates on it. You could have st stuff next to it. Some trays are not meant to be used for any kind of dishes and serving and any of that stuff. So we wanted to make sure that it was actually a usable surface. But this, look at, look at this. Now its corner is slightly different than the anyway tray, but it's actually a little bit more pointy so it kind of tucks in there tighter. So how cool that you could make a gift for daughter-in-laws, uh, nieces, all the things, and give them some inserts. So mm -hmm. in my experience, a lot of people like to paint but they run out of room in their house for the things they want. But if you're gonna buy a gift for somebody and then you can make the inserts that keep on giving, you know, yeah. I, I feel like that is just really a valid thing. I can Kelly this said a those would make excellent get well sick trays delivered oh, with would. love to someone recovering. Oh. That's a great idea. Kind of really, really good idea. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Well, and then think about it. You could use you could use it as a little puzzle tray, mm -hmm. and like there's like so many things. And yeah, I'm I'm not gonna go there because I could go. <laughs> we'll ramp. do trays another day. We'll, we'll do that another day. But it's a great great tray. All right, so now let's. We talked about the sizes. I want to talk about the finishes. Um, so the finishes. You ready? So we'll say this. Make sure that you go and subscribe to our channel if you are loving this content because that is the best. Okay, so this is ta da ta da ta da product, and you don't need four of them. I pretty much use this one, but I use this one for something else. So this is the Rust Oleum Painter's Touch 2X Ultra Cover Paint Primer. 
flat white also bonds to plastic. And what I think I'm seeing is that the, there's a chemical in this that gets to the plastic and it literally does bond because I have been scratching at this, I have been sanding at this, I've been doing all these things and gosh, if you had, um, they and they make it in the sheens, they make it in satin flat and, and shiny, but if I had some patio furniture chairs that were the plastic and I wanted to spruce them up, like I would be 100% sold on this product. So once I took my shiny that I used for this, the next thing that I did was paint the rim with our paint and give it its scratch test to see if I could scrape that off and you could not. So I needed it to be primed so that my paint would stick to the primer. That's what I needed. That was like the goal. Yeah. Can so. I have you lay those down under the bottles? Okay. Underneath, um, turn them around the other towards you. Okay. So that Steve okay. can get them from the overhead. And then if anyone wants to, um, Nick, get them from the overhead, Nick. Yay. <laughs> Nick is behind the, the magic curtain today. There we go. Okay. So we have, this is flat white, flat gray, matte clear, and flat black. And the reason you want them flat or matte is so that they have no shine. Anytime you have something, now this had, this was the shiny. Um, anytime you have something shiny, it's usually something that won't be sticky. So that is why you wanna use this. So I literally used rubbing alcohol and these products. Um, you would use the white if you wanted an undercoat of say something that was gonna be bright. Like if you wanted a pink or a yellow or something like that. You'd use the gray if you're gonna base in red. Um, you could also use these on things like your tall porch signs if you wanted to. Um, and then the matte, the clear, um, let me show you what I did with that. Okay, so this is not a very pretty example, but I can think of many reasons why you'd want it. So this is this um, wonderful art, and it's, it's not ugly art, it's the colors are a little yellow. Um, but so say my tray was painted a certain color and I put this in there and I think maybe it's just a little too yellow for me. So what I did is I whitewashed over the top of it and then I antiqued the edges. Now what needs to happen next is I need to sand it. And I was telling Carrie earlier, it's like, how many glasses of wine does it take for me to promise <laughs> to sand on top of plastic on camera? Um, and then one other thing, when you're testing things, you do a tape test to see if your paint comes off with the tape test. And that's super important as well. Really good test. So it only took a half of a glass and I'm gonna do it. And we'll go with our 220 and we'll come over here and we're just gonna sand across and just kind of dig into that and see if we can get it to kind of distress a little bit nicer and that's coming off right there I don't know if you could tell in a way right now what I'm doing is painting with sandpaper so just um, FYI that's the thing that you can do if I want it to go away I could make it go away and so you can actually do you see I'm sanding on this and this is my paint this white this black let's go over here it's not coming off. That's sandpaper with a heavy block and my muscly arms. We have a lot of people saying that they do use this pro product already. This is what I cover my porch signs with. Um, I use it on my outdoor plastics. I think I already have some of that. Nice. So we, you already have it in your house. Now you can just yeah. go grab your... Well, and it's so nice to know, like, chargers are really cool. Like, um, Carrie actually brought this up. Um, we go to market every year. A couple of times and when we were looking at the things that were in the catalogs and all of that every one of them had the little beaded things around chargers and plates well and just chargers and plates in general yeah. were for every holiday every season there was the outsides painted the insides painted with quotes or just a scene I mean it was like pervasive it was yeah. there and then to add the knobs on top of it was a trend on a trend yeah and we're gonna have some extra about how to do that or how to find mm -hmm. that but um don't forget that you can treat this differently than you treat this so for instance if you wanted to have 
um, some plaid, buffalo plaid for Christmas around here, and then come in here and do another little vignette or scene. Um, super neat, and then put it on a little plate rack thing or something so you can just make it be part of your decor right. as well. Like so exciting. And then you could put glass plates on. Oh, the world is good. So many things. I'm sassy I'm today. I'm just saying. Lori asked, will the multi-purpose paints not work on plastics? I don't. Um, which multi-purpose paints? Are they which brand? I need that brand. Okay, so now I'm going to jump ahead while we get that answer. And we'll talk about, so I went ahead, once we accidentally discovered that this guy would fit, I went outside in the freezing cold rain this morning um, and primed it. So this is fresh paint. Um, this is today's prime, three coats drying in between. I did blow dry lightly in between both. I have my stencil secured with tape. Um, because, and it does not peel off, and that is light on top of gray. Um, so I think that that is an example, and it was three coats of rolled, I did mm -hmm. roll it. One thing you need to know is this is super, um, it shows like every texture. If So if you scrape it, you might want to spatter a couple places so that it doesn't like um, look like, ooh, there's a scrape. Yeah. So it, it can scrape in the, in the material without taking the paint away. So then when we painted it, ta-da! So here is an example of it painted, and then it can slide right on in to this tray, and you have this example. I just did it monotone just because it was this morning when I decided to get it done. So um, come on out. And I'm not sure why. Oh, I think it's, this is crackle medium, I think. I, I, yes, I think we. The top is the crackled. Top is crackled. Yeah. yeah. And it, maybe it got put together upside down. Um, you can um, take the labels off, and the back side of it is way um, a little bit more smooth. So I don't think that should matter because it sticks like wonderful to the front. So now I'm ready for questions. Okay, Lori's uh, folk art was what she was asking. Oh, uh, you know, I don't know about folk art paints. Um, I used folk art paints um, 35 years ago um, and they were beautiful, but um, I got into a Delta lane and went there. And then when Delta kind of went the way, I ended up in Deco Arts mm -hmm. camp and um, Deco Art never disappointed me. So yeah. I don't know the answer to that. So let us know if you try yeah. it. If you guys find other things. Go find a $1.25 yes. thing and do some tests yeah, and let test us know. It. Yeah. Um, and then this is a painting community here. Yeah. Um, this isn't just, you know, me lecturing. This is us sharing. So Carrie going to do some stuff in and maybe in a blog post and that kind of thing. So we're going to share with you and let you know as we find out mm -hmm. um, what you guys say. Yeah. Uh, Jarita said, I wonder if Rust-Oleum would have their primer and a brush on formula. Did you see I that? I know. So I did not see that. And um, I am not a fan of spray paints. Um, that's not my go-to. I don't normally paint on plastic, but then I wasn't able to. Um, most of the things that I've painted on plastics before have had to be really hard pieces. Um, flexible is interesting. We actually have a very expensive piece of equipment um, that is, uh, it prints on surfaces. And if we did um, Lena's, if you guys remember Lena's videos, um, she is pregnant again, just FYI, I'm announcing that to the world. <laughs> um, yeah, um, anyway, but um, so grandchildren coming. But um, we did her wedding um, fake rugs, like we did fake Asian rugs going up to the altar because like I didn't want to spend, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars on each one. Didn't have people locally that we could borrow from. So Mar we printed them. Monarch's best seller. Ooh. Rust-Oleum best selling plastic primer. Okay, so Dustin got on his phone while he's sitting here and, or standing there, um, and said that Menards has a brush on plastic primer. It's it's Rust Oleum. I'm sure somewhere else. I'm you can sure buy them on Amazon too. It. Okay, so there it exists. Yeah. We haven't gotten that far. Mm -hmm. We got to the excitement because we could paint on plastic part. Anyway, we painted the rugs on the expensive equipment, but its paint wasn't flexible, or the ink in our machine isn't a flexible ink, and therefore it all cracked and peeled when we did this. 
And so um, by the end of the wedding, they lasted through the wedding, but by the end, they that stuff was chipping off and rolling off and doing all that. So this has been tested, flexed, and done all the things, and it works. Yeah. It's so exciting. All right, I have questions. Okay. Kelly asks, so you primed the placemat before, did you seal it afterwards also? I have not. Um, however, when I did the ugly version of going over the top, I used the clear um, on this, and it looked exactly like this. So you could use this matte clear on top to prime or to finish this. Um, and if you wanted a shiny, you could use a shiny, but yeah. Right. So this was absolutely clear and this is absolutely as flexible as the other. And you saw me sanding on it and stuff wasn't coming off. You could also um, use a wax. You could do any of those kinds of things as well. Yeah. Now, and we always recommend if you're going to be using the tray, you'll probably want the food safe wax just yeah. in case. And we have that Clapham's beeswax on our website yeah. that you can finish with. Yeah, and Dustin brought up a good point earlier. Um, if you've got your tray and you love your art and you're gonna serve and it's barbecue and you're gonna take your stuff downstairs, dropping one of these inexpensive buck 25 things into here um, so you don't douse up your tray is kind of a really neat idea. You know, so that that's a neat thing too, is you can just protect what you've got in the tray. Green. Um, do you sand between coats of primer if two coats are needed? No sanding, none. Like not even at the beginning. Like that's what I would have done in my other days before this product, but it is like not needed. So I did sand on these and then I was so encouraged by these that then I went to the maybe I don't have to sand stage. Yes. I love it. Let's see. We have lots of baby love. Um, I love baby love. Someone asked, can photos be printed or transferred on the placemats as well? Um, I do not know I the don't answer know. to that question. Um, I would think if I were thinking like a, an artist that has done this before, um, you have... Um, once you get your paint on there, so once you have the paint, it should act like any other painted surface. So if you can transfer photos with the medium you're gonna use onto a painted surface, you should be able to do anything you do with a regular painted surface on this. Once, so that was the key, remember that, is could I get water-based paint to stick to this and that was my goal was to get the paint to stick because if the paint sticks i can stencil i can antique i can distress i can do all the things and that was the goal and so that was achieved with this um amy asked how do you apply the clapham's wax over a large surface like this tray? super super duper easy so the clapham's comes in a really small jar and um oh the blue paper towels went to or went to the trade show with us. Can you give me a paper towel? Mm -hmm. Oh, I do have one here if you want to skip. Oh, it's okay. Okay, so have a paper towel. I usually use something that is lint free, like the blue paper towels. Use a little bit of it and I'm take this guy out. Now, this is going to make it so you can't do anything else to it unless you clean it off. And um, so, like, I think if this was going to fit in this tray, I would still want to distress and antique, but this is a buck twenty-five, so I can I don't have to worry about that, right? So what you would do is you would just wipe it on, wipe it all over your areas, and then you take your clean part of your paper towel and buff it off. And that is how you're going to make your um, waxed surface. So super easy. Good question. That's all the questions I have. All right, you guys, we enjoyed, absolutely enjoyed this today. Are we at this camera? This yes, camera? this camera. <laughs> uh, we enjoyed this. You guys, please give us comments. Um, tell us what you're doing, and we'll see you on Tuesday yes. at noon. See ya.